Hey folks, welcome back. This is Joel, and um, in this video, we'll talk about OTV, right? I um, actually wanted to make this video with Nexus, but looks like the Titanium images doesn't really support the data plane of OTV. So I went back and did the whole thing using iOS XC, right? These are your CSR 1000 views. Cool. So uh, we are going to be configuring this whole thing, but before that, let's talk a little bit about what OTV is, right? So OTV is basically like they say, so this is the documentation which I'll be following, right? It's a Cisco guide out there, which is publicly available. And uh, the release which I'll be using is 16.9.5, right? Uh, you can probably try this in the most recent releases as well, probably 17.x should work. Uh, but yeah, I'm using 16.9.5. It's a future release. Okay, what does uh, OTV do, right? So OTV basically connects to connects L, connects your L2 or provides L2 connectivity over you know a transport or a L3 network right uh, a typical DCI I would say data center interconnect there are so many other DCIs as well right which provide L2 connectivity we have all those things which we have discussed before uh, under MPLS right your VPLS or probably uh, Atom and uh, all of those technologies also do the same thing right even VXLAN also can be used as a DCI, right? So there are so many technologies out there and this is just one among them. All right, so things you need to know. What do you need to know? So first things first, right? You need to know what are the components of OTV, right? What, what are the various components? Let's look at our diagram to kind of understand that, right? So here, as you see, you have a transport network. You have site one, site two, right? And uh, our final goal is to get these guys to talk to each other. Right, we want uh, we want our uh, host one over here, right? This one, so we want this guy to talk to this one, and we want the other one, which is probably this one, to talk to this guy, because you know we are extending VLAN 10 over L3 network. We are extending this VLAN 15 over L3 network. That's what we are doing. Okay, so that being said, so what are what are the components, right? Few things like the first thing is edge device. You'll keep you'll you'll keep um, you know hearing this uh, in a OTV discussion. Edge device. So edge device is basically this, these devices, right? Which which really do your uh, you know encapsulation, right? Which take your you know Mac, uh, which which basically you know take your L2 frames and then encapsulate in some L3 frames and send it over the transport, right? And they are the ones which engage in this whole OTV control you know control plane, right? They are the ones which uh, talk to the other OTV devices, other edges, and bring up this control plane, which is basically nothing but exchanging the MAC addresses, right? Bringing, doing the MAC routing. Cool. Next is you will also hear me saying uh, AED sometimes. What is AED? AED. Let me write it. Right. Authoritative edge device. AED. Right. So generally, whenever you have like a multi-home situation, like here, right? I have two. I have two edge devices, don't I? I have two edge devices here as well. So what you do is for load balancing purpose, right? And also for multi-homing, few VLANs you forward using this edge, right? Edge one and few other, you know, you kind of um, forward the traffic using the other one, right? So AED is basically like an elected edge device for a particular VLAN, right? Which forwards the traffic for that particular VLAN. That's it, as simple as that. Next, you have the transport network, nothing very complicated yet, simple IP network, right? Uh, probably some IGP running, right? Nothing very fancy. Uh, then we also have something called a join interface, right? Join interface is generally this guy, right? Let me use the, this one, right? So this one, this is the join interface, right? You have join interfaces here, here, here. So these are the uplinks, right, uh, of the OTV edges, right? Uplinking to the transport network. Right? It's generally a point-to-point -point, you know, routed network and it will have an IP address and uh, this is the interface which will be used to advertise the MAC, right? The MAC which of this particular LAN, right, over, over the transport network. So this is the L3. Generally, it's a L3 point-to-point -point routed link. Okay. All right. The other stuff is what else? Um, I mean, this is not probably very important, but uh, better to know or the term which is used. The interface which is uh, facing towards the LAN, right, this one, that is generally called as an internal interface, right, just a name, right, nothing uh, special about it, right, this is generally a L2, inter, uh, L2 link, right, like a trunk link, right, all the VLANs, all the traffic from different VLANs will be coming to your edge device through these links. 
okay so in our case we have two vlans vlan 10 and 15 those traffic will be coming on this internal link okay and then the whole uh, uh, you know this area is called as a site right otv it's called as a site right you can have multiple sites you, you can probably have sites probably all over the world right so you would uh, you would you would probably if you have a data centers all over the region geographic region then you know you would have multiple sites right so a site basically will have an identifier and all the you know uh, uh, edges inside that site right they will identify each other right as if they belong to the same site right so yeah nothing very significant you just need to know that all the edges in the same site will have a identifier and there's one more vlan right it's called as a site vlan right that site vlan is actually used it for like i said right a particular site can have multiple edges right so for these both guys to talk to each other there will be something called as a site vlan I think of it as a some kind of a, a VLAN which is used for exchanging hello messages between the edge, uh, edges which are in the same site. Okay. All right. What else? So that's mainly from the um, you know top uh, this thing. What is that? Naming conventions and the components involved. Okay. Now, <clears throat> how does this really work? I mean, let me give you a very very brief understanding. Right. Uh, before that, let me also talk about one more thing. OTV behaves slightly different. Yeah. Uh, depending on the transport right so this is your transport isn't it so let's pick the transport here so there can be two types of transports one is multicast uh, you know capable transport and other one is only unicast right so in multicast capable transport it behaves slightly differently right it's actually more optimal and more easier to uh, i mean uh, e i wouldn't say very easier because both the configurations are very simpler but it's more optimal right and we'll kind of understand that when we configure it and when we look at the packet walk, right? But, uh, you know, the multicast transport is actually kind of uh, uh, more optimal because the transport itself is enabled for multicast something like a, you know, sparse mode or something like that, right? Whereas in case of unicast, uh, it, your OT will still work, right? It's just that you'll have to do some kind of, you know, head end replication and, uh, you know, uh, uh, things like that. And, um, uh, yeah, that's mainly it, right? In Unicast, you also have a term which uh, you will probably hear me um, repeating, which is adjacency server, right? And we'll talk about what adjacency server really does when we actually, you know, talk a little bit about the packet walk, right? So that's uh, mainly uh, with respect to, you know, the whole OTV idea. Okay, now the other thing, right? I kept on telling that, you know, we are, we are basically using OTV to exchange the MAC addresses, right? It's MAC routing, right? All the MAC addresses which are, you know, involved in this particular site, they are kind of sent, you know, to the other site or to the other edges, right? Using this OTV protocol. But in the underlay, right, or basically the underlying or in the background, right, the protocol which is actually working or doing everything for you, you will be surprised. It is nothing other than your normal ISIS protocol, right? This is the guy which is actually doing the job for you, right? It's a normal ISIS protocol. Why we are using ISIS and not any other? Because ISIS works in a, uh, it's, it's one of the most flexible protocols, right? It's because it works with the TLB values, right? Type length values. So you can actually uh, ship any kind of routes using ISIS, right? Unlike your, say, something like OSPF, right? You have OSPF, uh, you know, you, you basically have OSPF v4 for IPv4 routes, and then you have a separate new protocol, which is OSPF v6 for, you know, v6, right? It's not very flexible. Uh, depending on the routes which you transport, you will have to define a new protocol in itself. But ISS was not built that way. ISS, you know, was um, uh, it, it was built to be flexible and it can carry any kind of routes, right? So that's why they use ISS. And ISS is actually, but the good thing is you don't have to configure anything, right? OTV does everything for you, right? You don't have to literally go to router ISS and configure ISS, right? That, that you don't have to deal with all that hassle, okay? Now, <coughs> So if that is the thing, how do how do you think this whole thing is going to work? So let me just get rid of everything, right? So the packet walk, right? When you talk about packet walk, it's actually nothing. It's actually pretty simple, okay? So how it really works is, so this edge device, right? Like I said, it, it will know about it. There are different mechanisms by which it is going to learn about the MAC addresses in its own site, right? Because all this, all this host which are there in your site, they'll be probably sending some kind of a traffic, right? Maybe DHCP or ARP or something, right? They'll be generating some traffic. So <clears throat> by different ways, by, you know, Mac learning process, right? Your your edges are going to learn about the hosts which are there in your site, right? So it is going to have like a Mac table here, right? 
So it's going to know that the MAC address, right, or whatever the MAC address of this is, it will know that, uh, you know, to reach, uh, say, for MAC address of H11, it will know that it is locally, you know, reachable, right? So it will not send it over the OTV or the transport, right, or the o overlay tunnel. But for, um, but let's say this particular host, right, the MAC address of this one will be learned by this guy and over ISS, it is going to send it here, right? And so for this MAC address, right, it is, what is it? It's going to be H21, right? For this MAC address, it is going to, um, or in its MAC table, it is going to mention, or it is going to learn that to reach this MAC address, I have to reach it over the overlay, right? So it will basically point it to the IP address of this OTV21, right? So the IP will be mentioned here. So that is the MAC address and IP mapping, which I was talking about, right? So now when when this otv um, 11 right it gets a packet right which is destined to this particular host it will you know send it over the overlay network right onto this guy and this guy will decapsulate it and send it to the local lan right as simple as that just we need to remember this one right the mac the mac ip mapping so that's why you call it as mac routing right because you are able to kind of you know talk between you know, talk talk between to uh, between the VLAN which, uh, which is spread across two different sites, but via L3, right? So as simple as that. Now probably let's get rid of that and let's concentrate on the most fun part, which is you know configuring, right? So let's get rid of that. Okay. So where we are? What do we do first? So we are going to break this. Okay. Let me actually write that as well. So we are going to break the whole thing or the game plan for us today, right? <coughs> Give me one second. Let me write that down. All right, so uh, these are the five different you know steps which we'll um, configure or which we are going to take, right? We'll start with configuring the underlay, right? So we've got the underlay, which is the transport network and little bit of underlay over here also, right? We've got like a typical, you know, L2, L3 network here. So we need to configure that, right? So that'll be your step number one. Next, we are going to explore how, um, you know, OTV kind of works in a multicast environment when the core, when the transport you know, allows multicast. So, uh, step number three, we are going to try, we are going to remove the multicast, right? Uh, we are going to remove the OTV multicast and we are going to see how unicast works. Step number four will be to talk about redundancy, right? How the two OTV, um, you know, devices in the same site, right? How do they work? And the fifth one would be FHRP, right? Which is like, uh, we'll, we'll look at how HSRP really works with OTV, right? How, how, how both of them work work together right so that's something which we're gonna check out cool so that being said let me probably uh, yeah just hide that and uh, let's get to configuration guys so let's start with like I said ISP 1 ISP 2 ISP 3 we just have three routers so let's quickly go and I should have it here yeah there you go so we will go and basically configure this one okay so right now we don't have any configs right so let's see what do we have see it's a fresh router uh, these are all my IOL routers, right? They don't really have, uh, uh, it's, uh, I mean, you can use any virtual IOS as well, but this is literally IOL routers, okay? So let's start. Um, so let's start with what are we doing? We are doing ISP. So let me uh, look at the configuration. Where is my ISP? Yeah, here. So if you look at the ISP, what we're gonna do is we're gonna spin up a IGP here, right? We could put any IGP, we're gonna go with OSPF, right? Look at the links. Ethernet 0 slash 1 um, is connected between 1 and 3, that is 0 slash 0 and 0 slash, okay, so that's pretty cool. So let's start with the ISP number 1, right, so let's go and change the host name, right, and uh, let's configure the IP addresses, right, so for Ethernet 0 slash 0, we're going to put uh, 172.16.12.1, right, so there you go, that's done. Let's go to the second interface, which is ethernet uh, zero slash one. And that's gonna be, let's use, because it's connecting one and three. So let's use 13, right? So and that's my naming convention. I uh, hope you get that, right? Ethernet zero slash zero is connecting router one and two. So that's why it is 12. This is 13, uh, what else? So let's also go ahead with, uh, if you see here, uh, this for ISP1, there are two links connecting to the transport and then there are two links connecting to your customer, right? Now, technically, obviously, um, you know, you wouldn't be running ISP, you won't be running the same ISP process. Generally, you'll run different ISP processes. You'll run 
sorry, different OSPF processes, right? You would run one process inside and you would run one more different process for these links. But since it is just a lab, I'm going to just create only one process and advertise everything inside that, right? So what is going to be my address for this one, right? Uh, Ethernet 0 slash 2. So the link which is connecting ISP and your OTV 1, 1 so I'm going to use something like 100, right? I'm going to use in the 100 space. So let's go and configure that. There you go, Ethernet 0 slash 2, I'm going to say 100.10.11.2, right? Why 11? Because it is uh, site number 1 and device number 1, right? That's why it is 1, 1. So I'm going to use that. And you see I'm using dot 2, which means on the device, on the customer device, I'm going to use dot 1. Or on the edge device, I'm going to use dot 1, okay? Similarly, uh, we also have uh, one more edge device, if you observe here, right, from the diagram. We have one more device, right, which is OTV12. So I'm going to use 12 for that, right? So it's going to be, okay, my bad. Let me do that again. Okay, so that's going to be 12.2, right? Pretty straightforward. So that's how I'm going to configure. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to configure one ISP router properly for you guys. And then I'm going to pause the video and configure the rest too, because I don't want to simply bore you guys with the same configs, right? Cool, so I've configured all the links. What else do we do here? Let's go and enable OSPF, right? So I'm going to say router OSPF1, okay? And we'll put a router ID as well for this one, right? So I'm going to say 1.1.1. And let's start advertising the networks, guys. What are the networks? So we've got, uh, starting with this one, 172.16, uh, 12.0, right? And uh, let's uh, put in the um, wildcard mask, which is 0 .0 0.0.255, area 0. Cool. Similarly, um, the other network would be what? Change this 12 to 13. That's it. And uh, there is there are two more networks, which is 100.10.11.0, right? If I'm not wrong. And the subnet would still, be, I mean, the wildcard mask will still be the same. Let's just change this 11 to 12, and we'll be done with it. Sorry. Yeah. There you go. Cool. We can quickly have a look if you want. Show run section. Uh, OSPF, there you go, right, that's my OSPF configs. Next, in the core, right, we'll have to enable multicast because like I said, our first uh, task is we'll be checking out how OTV works in the multicast space. So we'll go and enable multicast on this. So how do we do that? Uh, let me give me a minute, yeah. Yeah, so we'll basically go to uh, ConkT, I'm going to say uh, IP multicast it's dash routing yeah there you go enable multicast as well so we have enabled multicast routing but on all the links right which we have um, range ethernet 0 to 0 to 3 i guess how many links do we have um, yeah 0 0 0 1 0 2 0 3 right all the four links what i'm going to do is i'm going to say ip sorry enter i'm going to say ip pim and sparse mode all right that's it. So I just need to enable sparse mode on all the links. Uh, the reason being, like I said, I'm enabling multicast in the ISP because we want to check out how OTV works in the multicast space. Now, the other links, which are the other two links, the links which are facing the customer, right? The, these links, we will need also to, we'll need IGMP on these, IGMP version 2, right? Because you don't really want uh, multicast routing in the, on the customer side or on this join interfaces. You want multicast routing only enabled on the transport. On the rest of the interfaces, we'll just have IGMP, right? Mainly for the learning, MAC, address, MAC learning and all of that. So let me go and do that. So I'm going to say interface range again. Sorry, let me actually clear the screen a bit. I think it's, let me clear the screen, right? So yeah, I'm going to say, uh, <clears throat> let me get rid of that, okay. So I'm going to say um, interface range and Ethernet uh, 0 slash, um, but this one will be two, 2 and 3, right? These are the interfaces facing the, uh, these are the ones which are facing what? The um, customer. So I'm going to say IP, IGMP, version and 3. Cool. Is there anything else? Let me actually create a loopback interface as well, right? Because we'll be... Um, uh, because we are using sparse mode, right? So we need some kind of a rendezvous point for my multicast, right? 
So for that, we'll create the loop back and I'm gonna put the address as say something like 1.1.1, .1 .1, 255, right, that's good. Um, and I'm gonna obviously enable this guy in my uh, uh, OSPF, right? I'm gonna say OSPF one area zero and I'm gonna enable the PIM sparse mode as well. Cool, that's good. And the, now the most important part, what we'll do is, we we'll enable the PIM rendezvous point, right? So I'm gonna say RP candidate, right? I'm gonna statically configure it to loopback zero. I'm gonna use uh, PIM BSR. Uh, this is all typical multicast. I'm not gonna explain this much here because uh, uh, I'm just trying to give you an understanding of how to enable it in the code, right? That's it, as simple as that. So we are good, right? That's, that's mainly what you have to do on your ISP router, okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to quickly pause the video and do the same configuration what I did exactly here. I'm going to do the same thing on ISP 2 and 3 and I'll be back. Okay, give me one minute. All right, so we are back. I've configured uh, the uh, um, routing on all the three ISP routers, uh, very similar to how I explained for the first one. Uh, the only difference, right, between uh, the rest of the two routers is with respect to PIM, uh, you would basically not configure the last two commands, right? If, so if you look here, let me show you in ISP2, show run uh, probably section PIM, right? So you really don't have those uh, random point configured on this one, right? You just configure that random point only on this one. So you can say show run section PIM. There you go. So only these, these are the two extra commands on the first ISP route because, because we are configuring the loopback zero of um, my, uh, you know, uh, ISP1 as the RP, right? On the rest of the two devices, you really don't want that. Cool. Um, everything looks good. If you want, um, I can also see probably M route. Right, there you go. So, um, I think my random point has still not come in, but that's fine. Let's check on this one. Okay, not yet, but I think it should, it should be should come in soon. So that's fine. Okay, so we have configured the routing, we have configured the multicast um, and um, we are good with the ISP side. So we are good here, right? This part is good. What else? What do we do next? All right, so the next would be, let's go and quickly configure the, um, you know, edge devices, right? The OTV edge devices. Mainly we'll configure this gigabit one interface of all the four edge devices. Let's start with the OTV11, right? So let's go back here. Uh, so OTV11 is connected here, right? On which interface? I think it is, um, if I'm not wrong, it should be ethernet zero slash two. So let's check that. Or let's do just uh, show IP interface brief, right? So there you go, so this one, right? 100.10.11.2. So that's what we have to configure on this side, right? So let's, so this is like, you see here, it's a completely new box. There's nothing here. Let me actually disconnect and connect again. Okay, there is literally nothing. It's clean, right? Let me show you the version if you want. Show version, it tells that it is 16.9.5. Cool. All right, so let's clear the screen and let's get to business, right? Cool. So. <clears throat> let's configure the gigabit one interface, right? Starting with some host name, right? Uh, let's put in the host name, which is going to be OTV. Let's call it OTV11, right? Uh, now the gigabit one, right? Which is, uh, which should basically be, what should be the IP address like we discussed? Gigabit one, and let's get to this one and let's use this one, right? That's the interface. So we're going to say, uh, miss that IP address over there. Okay, so we're going to change that dot two to dot one, right? Rest is the mask, as simple as that, right? And what else? We need to advertise this guy in the OSPF. So I'm going to say IP OSPF one area zero, and we do a no shut. Okay, it's going to say, oh, you don't have OSPF yet configured. So let's configure OSPF. So I'm going to say what um, router OSPF one, and let's put in some kind of a router ID. Right, route ID in this case, let's go with 11.11.11. .11 Great, okay. Next, what else? Uh, like I said, let me clear the screen a little bit. 
uh, like I said, we really don't want IP, um, we don't want multicast routing, right? But we need to enable uh, IGMP version 3, right? And we need to enable the PIM passive. So all of that is there very nicely mentioned in the documentation here, right? If you follow through this, it's very much uh, clearly given why you need to do any of the steps which I'm doing, right? So as you see here, we need to enable IGMP version 3 and we need to enable IP PIM passive on the interface, right? And also we need to have some global command where we enable multicast routing but it is in the distributed mode right so that's something which we need to do so let's get to that right so we are on the let's get back to that gig one interface right and on this interface what we'll do is we'll say ip pim passive right we'll enable passive right which means it won't send or receive any pim messages because it's really not really needed and let's enable the igmp just like we did on the service provider side, we're gonna say IP IGMP version three, right? That is it. And like I said, you know, from the documentation, they are explicitly asking us to enable a uh, couple of extra commands. As you see here, the following commands are also necessary to be added globally to ensure multicast forwarding happens, right? So we need to enable, for enabling multicast forwarding, we need to get these three commands out there. So we're gonna say IP multicast routing distributed, Right, so let's this is a global command so let's go and configure those and the two other commands are over here right so we are literally doing this configuration looking at the conf uh, configuration guide right nothing very complicated here right cool there you go so that's that's three needed okay so that's mainly it right so that's that's basically what we are doing so let me just look at what we did right let's clear the screen once so if I do show uh what if i do uh, show run interface gig one right this is what we did we put in an ip address we enable pim passive igmp version 3 we enable ospf and uh, let's see what we did uh, from a global perspective right show run i think uh, we had a multicast command <coughs> so that was yeah this is the distributed command which we enabled and what, what did we do with respect to IGMP? That's, there we go. These are the two commands which we enabled for IGMP. Cool. So again, I'm going to pause the video and go and configure the same gig one interface on all the three, on the other three, you know, OTV devices, right? Uh, I really don't want you guys to waste time. So I'm going to pause it and do it in the background. All right. So I've configured the uh, gigabit one interface right which is what let's look at the diagram the gigabit one interface is the one which is connecting the edge devices to the transport right on all the four uh, edges right it's the same interface i've configured that uh, you can see the ip address everywhere right 11.1 12.1 13 uh, sorry 21 and 22 right we can also quickly verify if the routing is working fine which means i mean uh, like i said this transport can be anything the only requirement is that all these four edges should be able to talk to each other right so let's look at that. Let's look at the, let's clear the screen a bit. So if I do show IP route and there you go, right? So we've got, a, we got all the routes, which means I can just do ping 100.10. I think 12.1, uh, right? I'm able to ping that. I'm able to ping 21, right? Uh, the third guy is 22, I believe. And the last one, yeah, that's it, right? We just have three other. So I'm able to ping all of them and the connectivity is good, right? So that's good. What do we do next, right? So what are we doing right now? We are working our way. So we are doing the underlay and we are also kind of doing a little bit of multicast as well. So let's continue. So we have done the underlay from the transport side. Now let's do the underlay on the, you know, on the side side, right? So we have two core switches here. One is switch one, one, switch one, two. So let's get to that. So what do we need on this one? So like I said, we have two VLANs, VLAN 10 and uh, VLAN 15, correct? So let's configure probably, um, uh, let's see how much we can configure. Let's go to switch 11, let's see what is there. Right, the switch 11, okay, there's nothing. So let's go and configure, it's clear right now. Let me clear the screen. Okay, so let's say, yeah, let's get to the configuration. Um, so starting with a bit of Let's put in our host name, right? What are the VLANs do we need? We need VLAN 10 and what? 15, right? These are the two VLANs which are there in my site. So I'm gonna enable those two VLANs. Uh, 
let's look at the interfaces the ethernet 0 slash 0 2 is the one which is connecting to the host right and i want to put this um, in vlan 10 so let me do that right 0 slash 2 is in vlan 10 great okay and we are enabling port fast on it because we know for a sure that a host is going to be connected on it okay the rest of the two interfaces which is uh, 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 0 i'm going to just trunk it right just we'll enable trunk and we obviously all the vlans will be allowed on this trunk awesome that's done now the next very important thing is what i want to do is i want uh, this one let me use my pen here for a minute right uh, yeah so let me use that so what i want to do is for vlan 10 i want uh, so i'm going to enable hsrp right and for vlan 10 i want this guy to be my primary right this one so the traffic will be this guy will be the primary for vlan 10 whereas for vlan 20 uh, sorry vlan 15 i want this one to be the primary this this uh, switch to be the primary for hsrp right so let's go and um, you know kind of configure that right, so let me just get rid of that can i do that okay cool um, yeah so let me just get rid of that cool so let's get to the switch which is switch 1 1 right um, <coughs> So what are we doing? First, let's create the SVIs, right? Let's create the SVIs, uh, which is important. So I'm gonna say um, SVIs, right? So we have VLAN 10. So for VLAN 10, uh, we we'll have to how do we how do we configure HSRP, guys? Right? Pretty simple. So we'll say IP address. Well, let's give an IP address which is 192 say 168 dot 10 dot say 11 255 or 55.0. That's the IP address for the SVI. Next, we need to do the HSRP config. So I'm going to say standby, the group will be 10, IP address will be 192.168, say 10.254. Okay, that's good. And what I want to do is I want this particular switch to be my primary, right? So I'm going to give, give a higher priority for HSRP. So I'm going to say standby, uh, 10, priority, and probably 105, right? I'm going to no shut this interface. Happy? The next one is same thing VLAN 15 right the other VLAN the other VLAN I'm just going to put the IP address which is 192.168.15.11 uh, and uh, the subnet is going to be same as the earlier one let me just grab it instead of typing it and we will not have to put the standby priority on this one we will keep it to default priority but I'll have to put the group what is the group standby group is 15 for this one IP address and 192.168.15.254 that's it I'm not going to put the priority I'm not going to change the priority because I want this uh, switch to be the standby right for the second VLAN right cool so that is good there is one more thing right um, we'll actually revisit all the configs in one shot but there's one more configuration which I want to do it's always best practice to make the HSRP and kind of sync it with spanning tree. So I'm gonna sync it, right? I'm gonna say spanning tree VLAN and uh, did I do something wrong? Okay, let me get out of this. Okay, so I'm gonna say spanning tree VLAN and for which VLAN? VLAN 10 because this switch is the primary HSRP for VLAN 10, right? So I'm gonna make this switch as the root as well for spanning tree for the same VLAN, right? So that I sync it 8192. I'm going to probably put in a lower priority from the default one so that this this kind of this switch kind of is selected as the root. All right, all right. So I'm happy with all of that. There is one more thing. So what VLANs have I created? Let me just quickly check. Show VLANs. So I have created VLAN 10 and 15. There is one more VLAN. Remember while explaining, I said there is something called the site VLAN. Site VLAN is actually the VLAN which is used by the OTV edges to talk to each other. So I'm going to just create that, right? I don't have to create a v SVI and stuff. I just need to create the VLAN on the switch. Okay. So that's it, guys. Let me just clear the screen and let's walk through whatever we did, right? First, let's see the configuration on the interfaces. Show run interface Ethernet uh, 0 slash 0. That is the trunk. 0 slash 1 is also trunk. 0 slash 2 is the interface connecting to the host. That's in VLAN 10. Next, we created the SVIs, right, which is VLAN 10, right, there you go. Uh, for VLAN 10, like I said, I want this switch to be the, you know, HSRP 
uh, primary right or active for this particular VLAN and that's why I'm increasing the priority right this is the HSRP virtual IP right which I've configured okay uh, then for the other VLAN right interface show run sorry not 20 it's 15 right for the other one what we have is we just have standby IP we don't have the priority okay all looks good so that's about switch 1 1 right now let's quickly go and do the configuration on the other switch which is switch 1 2 right so once I do this switch 1 2 I'm going to pause the video and do it same thing on the other two sides and uh, we will basically come back after that right so let's quickly do switch 1 2 it's going to be majorly same as what we did till now right let me just get rid of that right so switch switch 1 2 let's first uh, get some host name here right so I'm gonna say host name switch 1 2 okay so once we have that what else so we'll create the VLANs which are needed right 10 15 and remember the last one which I created earlier which is triple one let's create that as well because that is the site VLAN OTV site VLAN and uh, next is we'll basically go and uh, the ethernet 0 slash 2 we'll have to put it in what vlan 10 or wait let me check vlan 10 uh, let's look at the topology okay this should be in vlan 15 isn't it so let me do that did i do a mistake somewhere Switched. okay got it yeah so that should be in VLAN 15 right so let's go and put that in VLAN 15 because that is the host which is that in VLAN 15 good that's good and what else so let's go and also enable trunk on the rest of the two interfaces like I did earlier there you go 0 and 1 trunk clear the screen a bit right so let me go to that okay all right so that looks good so we've enabled trunk what else next is remember um, we have to do the svis right so for vlan 10 the roles will change now what i want to do here is like i said i want this switch 12 to be the hsrp primary for vlan 15 right so uh, earlier over here switch 11 was the primary for vlan 10 but now i want switch 12 to be primary for vlan 15 so the configuration will slightly change right so vlan 10 and you see i'm not changing the priority here i'm keeping the default priority so that this particular switch is elected as a standby for vlan 10 right so let's put that and for vlan 15 i will obviously put in the priority i'm going to increase the priority so that i basically make this switch win the election and become the hsrp active cool and the last is we'll have to sync the spanning tree with the HSRP but this time we are gonna sync what the spanning tree of VLAN 15 not VLAN 10 because this which is active HSRP active for VLAN 15 right so I'm gonna do that okay hope that configuration was understood right pretty simple right we enabled HSRP we enabled spanning tree we made this guy as active for HSRP you know uh, VLAN 10 we made this guy active for VLAN 15 and then we synced the spanning tree of the corresponding VLAN as well, right? Because by default, what spanning tree will be running? PVST will be running, right? Per VLAN spanning tree, that's why, okay? Now let me go and quickly pause the video and do the configuration of the rest of the two guys. Give me a second. All right, so it looks like that is also completed. Um, I've configured the switch 21 and 22. Uh, very similar to how I did earlier, just the IP addresses will change right um, and looks like the interfaces are up right we can quickly verify if our hsrp is working correct so we can do show standby probably brief and you can see switch 11 is uh, okay looks like uh, this has become active for both of them so let me just quickly fix that by bouncing the interface All right, now we have what we want as you see here switch 11 it is active for vlan 10 whereas it is uh, standby for um, the vlan 15 right similarly on the other side switch 21 is active for vlan 10 right whereas standby for vlan 15 right very similar to what we wanted cool and on both the sides i'm using the same virtual ip right just to fi right cool that's all good 
we can also now quickly go and check uh, so the underlay part is completely done right we can uh, and we have enabled mpls also in the core we can quickly check if our hosts are able to talk to the default gateways right so what i have done on the host let's look at the host configuration let me clear the screen a bit what do we have on the host so show run interface uh, ethernet 0 slash 0 right i have just put in an ip address which is 192.168.10.50 right whenever you see dot 50 it means that it belongs to site number one right and 10 means it belongs to or this ip address is associated with what the vlan 10 so vlan 10 site site one right uh, and also just to make it easier i have also hard coded a mac address so that it's easier for us to look at the outputs later okay so you can see the 10 here and you see 50 here 10 is basically for the vlan 10 50 is site number one cool Right, so let's see if I can ping the default gateway, right, which is 192. Okay, I've also put in that command, default gateway command. I don't know if you can see that here. Let me see. Yeah, there it goes. So I've put in this command, which is IP default gateway, and this is the HSRP IP. So let's see if we can ping this one. Great, able to ping, isn't it? Uh, let's also check the other one, which is 12. Um, and what will be pinging here just change 10 to 15 that's it there you go able to ping everything is looking good now we'll get to the actual meat of this configuration which is configuring the uh, edges right we'll configure the edges for multicast so what we'll do right now is we'll actually configure only two of these guys because we want to just check if multicast is going to work so what we are going to do is we are going to configure uh, otv11 and we are going to configure otv21 right we are not going to touch these both we are going to keep it as is for now We'll talk about them when we do the redundancy part, right? Right now we'll do multicast only on one one and two one. All right, let's get to it. Pretty simple actually. The configuration is very simple. Let's get to the one one to begin with, right? So let's clear the screen a little bit. Okay, so how do we start? Um, <clears throat> so what we have done till now? Okay, so let's first enable uh, spanning tree. Right, spanning tree is very important, and we're going to enable spanning tree uh, in which mode? PVST. Right, I think that is the default mode, but I still want to explicitly enable it, right, just to get it out of the way. Now, we'll configure the interface which is GIG2. GIG2 interface, which is the site interface, right, that's the interface, L2 interface. So, I'm going to say GIG2, there's right now nothing, right. I'm going to configure because it is a router right you can't really do sub interface and stuff on this one so you have to do using service instance so which are the two vlans which are which are all the vlans which are going to run on this interface it is going to be 10 15 and that otv site vlan which is triple one right so let's configure those the configuration you do using site uh, service in, instance right so this is the configuration you say service instance 10 ethernet ncap.1q and bridge domain as simple as that right we will repeat the same thing twice more for 15 right change the instance to 15 that's for vlan 15 and the last one is for triple one because that is the site vlan otv site vlan there you go done so we are done with the gig2 interface okay uh, let's quickly see what is happening with spanning tree right so if i do show show spanning tree vlan 10 show spanning tree vlan 10 okay uh, probably the interface is not shut yet so let me do that let me do a no shut on the interface okay there you go looks like the interface is coming up now and once it comes up it should start you know enrolling in the spanning tree so let's check that show spanning tree vlan and 10 there you go so it's now coming up you can see the status is in the listening mode and then quickly you know it will change to forwarding right let's wait so it will change right uh, the same thing if you change this vlan 10 to 15 we should see the same thing yeah there you go it's in the learning phase right now and in few seconds it should change so this is very important right if the interface is in blocking state then you have problem Ah, there you go it's in forwarding right so 15 is forwarding 10 is forwarding right 10 is forwarding and triple one also should forward there you go all the three are forwarding awesome now let's get to the um, 
the OTV part of it, right? So for OTV, like I said, let's do the OTV configuration. This is actually pretty simple. Clear the screen a little bit. So what do we do? So we'll say OTV identifier or site identifier, right? If you see the site identifier, these are the two different ways you can give it. So I'm gonna say, I'm give it in, I'm gonna use the hex format, which is zero X one. That's the site identifier. Next, we have the OTV bridge domain, right? This is nothing but the site VLAN guys. OTV site bridge domain, sorry, I make a mistake. Yeah, bridge domain. And like I said, I'm gonna be using triple one. So that's the VLAN for the site. Cool, that's it. Next. So we have to create that overlay logical interface, right? So we'll get into interface overlay one, okay? And uh, because we are doing, what we are doing? We are doing multicast mode, right? So for multicast mode, how it works is, all the control packets involved with your OTP, they are sent to a particular multicast group and you can define that group. So I'm gonna say OTP control group and the group is say 239.1.1.1, right? So this is the group. This is the group for all the control packets which is going to be used. And I'm able to use this because my transport is currently supporting OT, uh, multicast, right? And then for data also, if there are any kind of broadcast and multicast in my data, uh, in my data plane, that will also be sent to a different group. I can use any group. I'm going to use something like, you know, uh, I don't know, 239.100.0 slash 24. Right, that's those are two important commands. One is your control group, one is your data group. Control group for sending all your OTP control packets and data as usual. Next is your OTP join interface. I told you about this, right? This is the interface, the layer three interface. Let's look at the diagram, which is the gig one interface. I'm going to use that, right? Gig one. All right, then we need to do the same service instance configuration we did here, right? But here we will not be extending three VLANs. We'll be extending or we'll be defining only two VLANs. Why? Because we really want to extend only two VLANs, right? 10 and 15. We don't want to extend triple one. Triple one is more of a site VLAN. So we'll just do that. There we go. Happy? Awesome. So let's just um, come out a bit and probably do a no shot, right? So now the overlay is going to slowly come up, okay? But this is of not much use for us because we have just enabled it on what? We have just enabled it only on the one single OTV device. Okay. So we will have to do the same thing on maybe another device, which is the OTV 21, right? Like I said, this one, right? Else, obviously there's no point. So let me do that. Okay, before I do that, let me actually show you a couple of things here, right? So if I do something like show OTV right now, see everything is, the state is up, but you'll see all these things. Forward capable is no, right? All of these things. Um, capability, it is telling multicast reachable, which is good. And it is showing all the information which we have configured, right? But basically this is of no use. You can see much of forward ready and everything is no, no right now, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly pause the video and configure the other side and uh, then we will see what, what is going to happen. All right. So I've configured uh, the same configuration on OTV 21, right? And uh, looks like it is trying to come up now, but it will still take time, time around two, three minutes, right? If you see here, show OTV, it's basically, you see, it's the same situation on the other side as well. While that is happening, let's um, quickly have a look at the configuration on the 21 side. Let's see if there were any changes. So let's see, show run interface, uh, what? Interface gig one, right? So this was not changed, right? This I've already shown you earlier, just an IP address on the gig. This is a join interface, right? It's a normal L3 interface and I've enabled OSPF, PIM and IGMP version. Very, I've explained this earlier. Let's go to the gig two. So in the gig 2 I have um, uh, uh, enabled service instance 10 and 15 because these are the two VLANs which will be extended and on this site I am using a different VLAN for site VLAN right the OTV site VLAN I was using triple one on site one and on site two I am using triple two you can use the same one also if needed I am using a different one and the last one would be what uh, before the last one let's actually look at uh, section or uh, maybe yeah, I think section should be fine. OTV, 
because I want to show you guys the site identifier right as you see here bridge domain is triple two and the site identifier is different right the site identifier is different for the different site because this is the second site and the site identifier is two okay and the last part is let's look at the overlay okay here you can see control group is same data group is same as earlier join interface is configured and the two VLANs which we are going to extend is also configured all right we can also quickly check the spanning tree as well spanning tree VLAN 10 uh, oh maybe my interface is not unshared so let me do that interface gig 2 no shirt okay looks like it's coming up now so let's see spanning tree VLAN 10 still not come okay probably take some time yeah there you go see uh, VLAN 10 the spanning tree is coming up there you go that's looking good let's change this 10 to 15 what is happening here yeah that's coming up and similarly triple two also should get converged right it's in the learning phase right so let's wait uh, this will take probably two three minutes um, even on here you can see the adjacent cc that's why i was studying right otv uses isis in the background you can see it is forming isis neighborships with the uh, new site which just came up right if i do show we otv here i can see everything is already come up right which is good let's wait actually for this one also to do that okay so it's forward capable yes but it's probably not forwarding ready so we'll wait for a couple of minutes and then we'll come back all right so i waited for enough time and looks like it has come up or is it let me double check again yeah looks like it's come up so this is a very easier way to check you can run the command which is show otv vlan right and if it is not ready it will basically tell that your vlans are not extended yet and they are inactive but once it comes up you can see it has changed from inactive to active right now let's quickly analyze what's happening here right so what do we have uh, so let's run show otv now right so you can see the state is up it is forward capable and everything it's AAD also, right? Uh, uh, we thought we talked about this authoritative edge device. The multicast groups are shown, the tunnel zero is shown, and everything looks good, right? Uh, you can run some commands like I don't know, maybe something like show OTV site. I do something wrong, yeah. Show OTV. So these are uh, common troubleshooting commands, right? You can see the OTV site uh, edge device name and the system IP, and everything looks up. Everything is green there. You can see uh, because, like I said, the underlying is ISIS, right? You can even see the database. So you can say show OTV ISIS database, and there you go, right? All the uh, you know all the uh, LSP IDs and all are shown here. You can even dig deeper if you want. You can say show uh, OTV ISIS data. If you want to see all those layer uh, level one, level two stuff, right? You can just do this, and you will basically get all the details about that as well. Right. So that's mainly on an ISIS perspective, not very much relevant to us. What else? So let's also look at, let's see first uh, if you are able to do this ping, right? So we have extended. So let's see if we can ping from H11, host1 to this host21. Okay. So let's go to host1 here. Okay. So let's see. Uh, I'm going to say ping 192.168.10.100. Right, that would be my IP, I guess. That's the IP, yeah. Let's see. So probably, yeah, one ping went down. I mean, one packet was lost, but rest succeeded. I also had uh, enabled packet capture so that I can quickly show it to you. Let me just pull it here. There you go, right? So this was the packet capture, and you can see here, you can see this is the this is how OTV, pack, OTV packet looks like, right? You have the actual ping here. This is the um, outer, you know, uh, sorry, this is the inside IP header you can see the packet is going from 10.50 to 10.100 and uh, you can see the encapsulation right happening so you have like the external encapsulation see this is the external IP header this is the IP address of the edge one this is the IP address of the edge 21 right or edge 11 and edge 21 you can see how it is getting encapsulated and it is 
sent right so this is why this is very important point here because of this extra encapsulation which comes into play right or the shim header it i think adds around 42 around 42 bytes if i'm not wrong right so that's why you need to make sure that your application is able to handle that right because if you're sending a huge i mean since i'm sending just 72 bytes of data it doesn't really matter but if i'm sending like a huge <clears throat> amount of data right then there might be a possibility that the packet might be dropped because you know fragmentation bit is always set to one in otv right so make sure that you know the mtu is set just uh, or you can just go ahead and make jumbo frame everywhere right that's also an option all right so let me just uh, get rid of that i think uh, probably we are good with that i don't think we want that anymore so we looked at the packet that's okay uh, what happened let me just refresh okay that's good so what else let's come back so the other thing is probably i can even uh, ping the other guy right which is from um, host 12 to host 22 also can be pinged right which is in vlan 15 so i can do ping 192 168 it's 15.100 right there you go that ping works and so basically our whole multicast you know otv is working perfectly right we can double check that we can go to one of our site uh, one of our otv edge and we can run commands like show otv routes right route and which bridge domain bridge domain probably 10 right we can see here so what i've done is i've hard coded the mac address so it's easier for us to figure out you can see this is the mac address of h11 because it is in vlan 10 and host or site 1 right so this is basically the mac address of the uh, you know uh, of the host which is present in site 1 that is why it is telling it is basically learned via you know service instance 10 this is locally learned whereas you see the second host it is telling that it is learned via ISIS right from OTV 21 right that's that's how it really works when when this OTV edge device gets a packet destined to this one it will create or it will send it over the overlay destined to OTV 21 as simple as that right these are obviously by looking at it you will understand that these are the HSRP gateways uh, MAC addresses right so that's mainly how it is working guys so uh, we basically actually configured underlay we configured the multicast and we configured the multicast otv uh, there's another cool feature right in otv which is arc suppression right so if you see here what it does is uh, with arc separate suppression right so you can do something like show otv uh, and uh, arc cache right there you go right so it will cache the you know mac and ip addresses basically the arp you can see this is the mac address and this is the ip address right it has cached it so that the next time you know we we don't really have to send a uh, arp request at least for three minutes you know 48 seconds we don't have to so it is going to cache it and um, that's how it, it basically employs this arp separation as well which is a very good optimization technique right if we go to our isp devices we will probably be able to see a little bit cool stuff right now in the multicast section so if i do show um, ip m route right there you go right we can see what do we see we can see that our uh, you know host 11 and host 21 have joined the 239.1.1.1 right this is the multicast group right this is the multicast group which is uh, basically sending or used for sending the control packets right otv control packets and you can see the hosts have joined it right and all the details are shown here right we are, it's basically telling this is the incoming interface and this is the outgoing interface right so if you match it with the topology you'll understand it better cool so that's mainly with uh, uh, the otv in multicast mode right so in the um, probably we'll stop at that in this video and in the next video we'll talk about the rest of the stuff which is the unicast mode We'll talk about redundancy and we'll also talk about HSRP. Alright. Thanks a lot guys for watching. Have a good one.